Top 20 GCP Data Engineer Interview Questions and Answers Are you aiming to become a GCP Data Engineer or preparing for your next cloud interview? Discover the top 20 GCP Data Engineer interview questions and answers that hiring managers frequently ask. Master key concepts, tools, and real-world scenarios to stand out and land your dream data engineering role today. 1. What are the core responsibilities of a GCP Data Engineer? A GCP Data Engineer is responsible for designing, building, and maintaining scalable data pipelines using GCP tools like BigQuery, Dataflow, and pub slash sub. They manage data ingestion, transformation, and storage while ensuring data quality, governance, and security. Their role includes optimizing query performance, enabling real-time data streaming, and integrating machine learning models. GCP data engineers also collaborate with data scientists and analysts to support business intelligence initiatives. They must understand cloud architecture and follow best practices for deployment, cost management, and compliance across the data lifecycle. Two, explain the difference between BigQuery and Cloud SQL. BigQuery is a serverless, highly scalable data warehouse ideal for analyzing large-scale datasets using SQL-like queries. It's optimized for read-heavy analytical workloads with support for partitioned and clustered tables. In contrast, Cloud SQL is a managed relational database service that supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server, suited for transactional workloads. While BigQuery handles petabytes of data with parallel processing, Cloud SQL focuses on transactional integrity and OLTP operations. Essentially, BigQuery is for analytics and reporting, while Cloud SQL is for traditional application backends needing asset-compliant relational databases. 3. How does GCP ensure data security and compliance in its services? GCP employs a multi-layered security model including encryption at rest and in transit, identity and access management, IAM, and VPC service controls. GCP provides tools like Cloud KMS for key management and Cloud Audit Logs for tracking data access. Compliance certifications include ISO, SOC, HIPAA, and GDPR. Data access is restricted through fine-grained IAM roles and service accounts, ensuring least privilege access. Additionally, GCP supports Customer Managed Encryption Keys, CMEK, and Data Loss Prevention, DLP, APIs to detect and mask sensitive information, ensuring end-to-end -end data protection and regulatory adherence. 4. What is the purpose of Google Cloud Storage and how is it used in data pipelines? Google Cloud Storage, GCS, is a scalable, durable object storage solution used to store raw, semi-structured, and process data in various formats, CSV, JSON, Avro Parquet. In data pipelines, GCS often acts as the staging layer where data is ingested from external sources before being processed by tools like Dataflow or Dataproc. It's also used for storing data exports, machine learning model outputs, and backups. GCS integrates seamlessly with BigQuery, AI Platform, and Pub slash Sub, making it a central component for both batch and streaming workflows. 5. How do you optimize BigQuery queries for performance and cost? To optimize BigQuery queries, use partitioned and clustered tables to reduce scan data. Avoid select asterisk and instead specify only required columns. Filter early with where clauses and use approximate functions like approx underscore count underscore distinct. Materialize intermediate results with temporary tables to reuse logic. Use with clauses for readability and reduce repeated computation. Monitor query performance via the query execution plan and BigQuery monitoring tools. Also, enabling caching, managing slot usage, and analyzing costs through detailed billing reports help in keeping queries cost-efficient and performant. 6. What is Cloud Dataflow, and when would you use it over Apache Beam? Cloud Dataflow is a fully managed service for stream and batch data processing built on Apache Beam. While Apache Beam is an open source programming model that allows pipeline development, Dataflow handles pipeline execution, auto scaling, and optimization without infrastructure management. You'd use Dataflow over self hosted Apache Beam for scalability, ease of deployment, and integration with other GCP services. It offers automatic resource provisioning and performance tuning, 
making it ideal for teams that want to focus on data logic instead of managing compute resources or clusters. Seven, explain how pub slash sub works and how it integrates with other GCP services. Google Cloud pub slash sub is a messaging service that enables real-time event streaming between independent applications. Publishers send messages to a topic while subscribers receive messages via subscriptions. It supports at least once delivery, push and pull models, and message ordering. It's commonly used in IoT pipelines, log aggregation, and microservices communication. Pub slash sub ensures decoupled, scalable systems that process data in near real time, supporting both streaming and event-driven architectures in GCP. Eight. Describe a data ingestion pipeline you've built using GCP tools. I built a real-time ingestion pipeline using pub slash sub, Dataflow, and BigQuery. Data from IoT sensors was published to pub slash subtopics. A Dataflow job read and parsed the messages, applied transformations like timestamp formatting and filtering outliers, then loaded the data into a partitioned BigQuery table for downstream analysis. Cloud monitoring tracked pipeline health, while cloud functions handled alerts. GCS was used as a backup for raw data. This setup ensured scalable, real-time analytics, allowing dashboards to display near-instant updates for anomaly detection and operational decisions. Nine, what are the key components of a modern data pipeline on GCP? A modern GCP data pipeline typically includes storage layer, cloud storage for raw files, BigQuery for analytics. Processing layer data flow for ETL slash ELT. Data proc for Spark slash Hadoop workloads. Orchestration cloud composer for workflow scheduling. Monitoring and logging cloud monitoring, error reporting and logging. Security IAM roles, VPC, encryption and audit logs. These components integrate seamlessly, enabling end-to-end, -end, scalable, secure and cost-effective data workflows. These components integrate seamlessly, enabling end-to-end, -end, scalable, secure, and cost-effective data workflows. 10. How do you handle schema evolution in BigQuery datasets? Schema evolution in BigQuery is handled through support for nullable and repeated fields. You can add new columns without affecting existing queries. When changes are required, it's best to create a new table version or use views to ensure backward compatibility. Schema updates can be managed via deployment pipelines using Terraform or DBT. For incoming data, use Dataflow to validate and reshape schemas dynamically. Also, store raw data in GCS to reprocess if needed. Schema versioning and metadata tracking are essential for long-term maintenance and governance. 11. What is Dataproc and how is it different from Dataflow? Dataproc is a managed Spark and Hadoop service on GCP used for big data processing tasks that rely on traditional open source tools. It provides full control over cluster configuration and supports custom libraries, making it ideal for legacy systems or specific workloads like Hive or Pig. Dataflow, on the other hand, is a serverless stream and batch processing service built on Apache Beam. Dataflow abstracts infrastructure management and autoscales based on workload. Choose Dataproc for custom, legacy, or MLib-based jobs. Use Dataflow for modern, scalable, and event-driven pipelines. 12. Explain the use of Dataform or DBT with GCP for data transformations. Dataform and DBT are tools for managing SQL-based data transformations in your warehouse, like BigQuery. They support version control, testing, and documentation of your transformation logic. You define models using SQL or templated code and orchestrate them into dependency-aware DAGs. Dataform, acquired by Google, integrates natively with BigQuery and GCP IAM, while DBT is widely adopted across platforms and supported on GCP via DBT Cloud or open source setups. These tools enable scalable, maintainable ELT pipelines by treating SQL transformations as software code, aligning with DataOps principles. 13. How do you monitor and debug data pipeline failures in GCP? Monitoring and debugging in GCP is done using cloud monitoring, cloud logging, and error reporting. Dataflow provides job logs, step-level metrics, and auto-scaling information via its UI. Alerts can be set for job failures, throughput drops, or latency spikes. 
For pub slash sub, message delivery and undelivered messages can be tracked through dead letter topics. Composer logs are available in Stackdriver. Debugging often involves inspecting error logs, reviewing code in cloud source repositories, and replaying failed jobs using stored data in GCS. Proactive monitoring ensures data reliability and uptime. 14. What are partitioned and clustered tables in BigQuery, and why are they important? Partition tables in BigQuery split data based on a column-like date, reducing scan size and improving query performance and cost. Clustered tables further organize data within each partition by sorting on specific fields, making filters and joins faster. For example, a sales table can be partitioned by sale underscore date and clustered by customer underscore ID. These optimizations reduce the volume of data scanned, leading to faster response times and lower query costs. Using partitioning and clustering effectively is crucial in managing large data sets efficiently in BigQuery. 15. How can you implement CI slash CD for data pipelines in GCP? CI slash CD in GCP data engineering can be implemented using Cloud Build, GitHub Actions, or Jenkins. Infrastructure as code tools like Terraform or Deployment Manager are used to manage GCP resources. For data flow or BigQuery pipelines, code is stored in a repository and automatically tested, lint, and deployed on merge. DBT or Dataform models can be tested and version controlled. For scheduling, Cloud Composer workflows are updated through code. Cloud build triggers deployments based on commits, ensuring consistent, versioned, and automated pipeline changes, aligning with DevOps best practices. 16. How do you manage and schedule workflows with Cloud Composer? Cloud Composer, built on Apache Airflow, is used to orchestrate and automate data workflows on GCP. You define directed acyclic graphs, DAGs, using Python to schedule and manage tasks across services like BigQuery, Dataflow, and pub slash sub. Composer handles dependencies, retries, logging, and monitoring. It supports dynamic scheduling, parameterization, and alerting through integrations with cloud logging and Slack. Composer ensures repeatable, traceable workflow execution, making it ideal for complex ETL jobs, data quality checks, and multi-step processing pipelines across cloud services. 17. Explain the use of IAM roles and service accounts in securing data pipelines. IAM roles and service accounts control access to GCP resources, ensuring least privilege access. A service account is an identity used by applications or pipelines to authenticate and perform actions. For example, a Dataflow job may use a service account with permissions only to read from pub slash sub and write to BigQuery. Predefined roles like roles slash BigQuery dot data editor or custom roles provide granular control. IAM policies define which principles, users, groups, or service accounts can access specific resources. Logging and audit trails further enhance pipeline security and compliance. 18. How do you manage large datasets and performance in BigQuery? Managing large datasets in BigQuery involves using partitioning, clustering, and table sharding to reduce scan costs and improve performance. Materialized views and caching can speed up repetitive queries. Scheduled queries help pre-process data for frequent reports. Avoiding unnecessary joins and using approximate functions also improves efficiency. Monitoring with the query execution plan and cost controls helps optimize queries. Data should be stored in efficient formats like Avro or Parquet, and schema should be designed with access patterns in mind. Best practices ensure scalable, low-latency analytics. 19. What's the role of machine learning in GCP data engineering workflows? Machine learning in GCP data engineering enables predictive analytics, anomaly detection, and intelligent automation. Data engineers prepare, transform, and serve data to Vertex AI or AutoML models. BigQuery ML allows direct ML model creation and predictions within BigQuery using SQL, reducing context switching. Data pipelines may include steps for training data prep, feature engineering, and real-time inference integration. GCP supports ML ops with tools like Vertex Pipelines and Model Registry. Data engineers play a crucial role in integrating ML into data pipelines and ensuring models are production ready. 
20 share a real-world scenario where you solved a big data problem using GCP. In a logistics company, we faced delays in package delivery insights due to batch processing. I implemented a real-time analytics pipeline using pub sub to ingest tracking data from IoT devices, data flow to process and clean data, and BigQuery for real-time querying. Cloud Composer scheduled data quality checks, and dashboards updated instantly. This reduced insight lag from 24 hours to 5 minutes. We also implemented alerting on delivery anomalies using BigQuery ML. The pipeline was scalable, cost-efficient, and improved operational decision-making, showcasing the power of GCP for real-time big data solutions. We hope these top 20 GCP data engineer interview questions and answers help you prepare with confidence. Stay focused, keep learning, and give your best. Good luck on your journey.